caravan. I remember one just like this picking me up. Could have been a shipment to Fort Joy. What happened? No, no, no! Why do you drift with salt? The dwarf flinches at your approach, yet she holds a short, clean blade aloft. Her fierce stance can't hide the trembling of her fingers. Back! Get back! I'll kill you, just like the rest of them! Shh, lass. I know you're all a fright. In times like these, I don't blame you. But I ain't out to hurt you. Now, why don't you take a few breaths and tell me what happened? She slumps, all bravado draining from her. No, no. I've never seen anything like those beasts before. Are, are they gone? Void walking, you mean? Poor thing. No wonder you were scared. Well, I'd be scared too. Those? Yes. Worst ones I've ever seen. Ripped through the Magisters. The dwarves. Dead. 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 And the sorcerers. Sorcerers. Gone. Her eyes stare vacantly into the distance, glassy as marbles. It's not cold, yet her shivering is relentless. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Duna's beard. Loha. My b -b boss, Loha, will want to know what happened to them, but I I can't remember. Loha, eh? Where will I find this boss of yours? Oh, well, you'll find him in Effie's Emporium, beneath the Black Ball. He's a fine man. A little gruff, yeah. But he's the only one in Driftwood wanting to help and not hurt. She looks up at Beast through tear-stained eyes. But you can see her resolve hardening as she remembers who she is and what she stands for. I... I... Oh, Seven Sympathy. I saw those things dragging the sorcerers along the cliffs towards the Wreckers' caves. I... I... Oh, no. No more. It's gone. She flinches at the slightest rustle of wind through the long grass. Terror in her eyes, she stumbles away from him. Coming off, like farm being sanded. Get yourself in check, boy. I won't have you running off like Milsant and Tully. You'll just end up sliding down some void Vulcan's gross gullet piece by piece. The older-looking magister notices your presence. He wipes his grubby hands downward across his greaves, as if to wipe away the grime but instead smears more dirt onto them. Halt! What word do you bring? His face goes pale and his eyes open wide. The Magister that greeted you remains stiff, as if enduring a harsh wind. The Void Woken come. Hush, Fader. You may pass, Traveller. Dare say you'll be aching to leave before long anyway. But before you do, find Raymond, the White Magister. He'll want to know what you've seen. Be quick, mine. He's set to sail any moment. He nods his head in the direction of the bridge, but offers no other instructions. As long as you stay put, you'll be safe. The kid is whistling an off-key tune as he strolls about shiftily. He raises an eyebrow at your approach, but says nothing. Eh, hey, not too out. Just looking for someone. Cena, eh, Ben Mezd. Ooh, Baron won't like that. Won't like that one little bit. The kid shoves his hands in his pockets and ambles off, resuming his tuneless whistling. Ma, that doesn't sound promising, does it? The little boy lobs a stone across the river. It makes a long arc before plunging into the water below. Oh, Ma! Are you all right? Ma! Huh? Please, you have to help her. There was a... a fight. Some dwarves attacked some magisters and there were sorcerers too. And, and then the books came. Those void things. They... killed everyone. And my mom got on to chase her. And she went across the bridge. And then she raised the bridge and... and, and she told me to run. And now she's stuck over there with them. Not without Ma. Family doesn't just leave each other. You... You, you will. Maybe... Uh, maybe you can cross the river then. Ma lifted the bridge, but there's got to be another way, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. You make one. And I'll... I'll... His gaze shoots to the ground. He grabs a small flat pebble and chucks it across the river. Again, it lands in the water below, well before reaching the other side of the cliffs. I'll keep distracting him. No way. Ma didn't leave me. I'm not leaving her. He performs a divine order salute. Now go out, Ma! There's one investigate behind them. Perhaps there's still a chance. The lizard hangs from the gibbet, her face blooded and her scales discolored. Her eyes are closed, but her tongue flickers as you approach. Welcome to Driftwood, Godwoken. One bloody eye cracks open, glittering gold appearing from beneath the swollen lid. Chased. <laughs> Chased you all the way here from Fort Joy, did they? Very well then, cut me down. There is work to be done. Or indeed you could stand there gawping as if you were a cow ordered to dance a reel. This is a masterful performance. I would applaud it, but well. The Meister bears her teeth, stained a deep pink by her blood, and gr Melody is unfortunately mistaken. I cannot train you, but I can certainly help you on your path. As long as I am free of this rope. Be quick about it, before the Magister realizes their prize catch is about to slip through the net. Excellent. Now if you'd be so kind as to gut that startled-looking Magister, it would be much appreciated. I must secure my home before they do any more damage.
I bet you're the musical sort. You ever thought about taking up the loot? I got a few ready to go, all freshly strung. A shame. Everyone's got a melody in them, you just gotta look. The brother Laszlo couldn't carry a tune in a bucket when he were a wee thing. Now, he's got the voice of an angel. He's... he's all right then, yeah? That's Laszlo all right. If he had the blues, you'd never know it. Nothing kept his big smile from brightening in the darkness. I hate the Magisters for what they've done. Stole me brother. Stole me heart. I keep going though. Hoping to get to Ark sooner than later. Lucian's day crowds will be wanting some musical trifles. Come back if you need. I'll be whittling away. Don't let them silence your song. Whether fanfare or lullaby. I think that lunatic Siva is loose again. We won't be so gentle when we catch her this time. Damn it. Magister Raymond wanted word in the caravan, but I had hoped the news would not be so grim. Report this to the Magister at the docks at once. You too, Julian. Show the marriage done, man. Go on, you mute sacks of flesh. Put your backs into it. I'll not lose another day to the tide. The Lord Dread awaits. It sails billow with Dallas's breath. Oh. The Magister stops barking orders. He sniffs the air like a predator, turns to face you, the wolf eyeing the deer. You do not get to make that decision. That decision is mine. A good day? Let's talk about a good day. Tell me, have you ever been strung up by the hands? Your body swinging like a bell's clapper as your bones are being broken with cast iron rods. We do cruel things unto others and unto ourselves because we must. He licks his lips. Dry flesh turns wet. See, I'd like to string you up too. Rack you with rods and leave you dangling over a puddle of your own blood and piss. My favorite one. I'm very good at what I do, see. I don't even need a sauce hound yapping by my side. There was a whiff of something in the air when you approached. A current of filth. That is to say, sauce. Best convince me I was mistaken. He leans in closer and sniffs the air once more. Interesting. So I was mistaken. Must have been ambition I smelled on you, not the magic that dare not speak its name. Very well. In that case, we'll forego the gallows and turn straight to the hunt. A would-be magister has to prove his killer instinct after all. Seems peaceful here, doesn't it? A quiet day in a quiet town. One wouldn't think these drifting woods toss on dwarf-troubled waters. But they do. I'm quite capable, but as you can see, I'm also preparing to set sail. And who will deal with them when I'm gone? Consider for a moment the dwarf. What is he? A mule, a beast of burden. But some defy that role. There are rats among them, dancing to their rat queen's tune. I have need of a rat catcher. Of course. I must depart post haste, but Julian here will stay behind and be a good little parrot. Ask and he will answer. Stay behind? But... but I've my orders. Same as you. Dallas. Like I said, Julian is staying. And with that, I must be off. No hard feelings about the death threats, of course. How about we part shaking hands instead of stringing them up? How very heartwarming. One last thing. The Magisters here are diligent men and women. A stranger like you may run into... troubles with them. 
Should this happen, just wave this piece of parchment in their eager little faces. My signature will placate them without fail, I assure you. Adieu and good luck. The Lord Dread awaits. The use of the gallows, I pass on to you. The time has come, my stitched-lipped lovelies. We set sail. Get on board and man your stations. Left behind like a dog. Blah. The Magister is rubbing the dirt off his robes. None the worse for wear, apparently, from the blast of magic that knocked him off his feet. You! The damn recruit. I'd be whining and dining aboard the Lord Dread if it weren't for you. Your meddling in Magister affairs had better be worth it. Yes, I am very much aware. It wasn't my damned head that hit the floor back there. Now answer me. Did you meet with a Magister caravan on your way into town? The hour's growing late and I'm beginning to worry something might have gone wrong. By the bishop's bones, you saw it! Now out with it, man! What happened? Dwarves! The pox on those beardy devils! Raymond, that old goat, always suspected there's more to the driftwood dwarves than meets the eye. Hate to admit it, but I think he may be right. Too many things have gone wrong along Reaper's coast to attribute to bad luck. Magister ship sinking, weapons disappearing, and as you've seen, a caravan attacked and destroyed. Rumor has it the Dwarvian Queen herself is behind these acts of sabotage. That is what I want you to prove. There's a local thug, Lohar. He runs an operation out of his hideout beneath the Black Bull Tavern. I suspect this man of being a spy for his queen. It may be interesting to have a word with him, find out what he's up to. But where I really want you to ferret around is Reaper's Bluffs, to the east of Driftwood. It's wild territory, remote and hostile, where I believe the dwarves may have set up a base of operations away from prying eyes. Should you find any such place, and better yet, proof that Lohar is working on behalf of Queen Justinia, you will be handsomely rewarded, I assure you. They've always been snakes in the grass. Cheap labor, sure. And hard workers, too. Half of them are their queen's spies. Her eyes, her ears, her poison-pouring hands. Queen Justinia will stop at nothing. She's a tyrant and a master strategist to boot. In that case, go forth and let the hunt commence. Hello, mister. The little boy looks at you. He picks his nose. You be careful. My daddy's a magister. No, he's not. His daddy's a fisherman like most daddies around here. They stare at you in disbelief. Then they start laughing. You're weird. We're waiting for our friend. He went for a swim. He'll be back soon. He went swimming all the way to Fort Happy. Fort Joy? That's what I said. Fort Joy. He's going to find his mum and bring her back. Oh, I want my friend back. Ben, if he finds his mum in Fort Joy, they're probably both really happy now. So don't worry. Isn't that right, mister? See, Ben? I told you so. If Fort Joy wasn't nice, they'd come home to Driftwood. Well, I guess so. Thank you, mister. Now, if you don't mind, we're busy waiting for our friend. Bye-bye, mister. The kids turn back to the water. Ben picks his nose. There's no sense. I'm Dallas. I'm Alexander. You're the source of You stranger. What are you doing here? I'm someone investigating the disappearance of four magisters. There's a sorcerer stalking these streets, an affront to our order. Several brothers have gone missing. Now tell me, have you seen a man in a grey cloak, grey beard, carrying a satchel, perhaps? It wasn't me who caused the boy's woes. The magister's eyes narrow, and her lip curls as she assesses you. It's vital that you report anything unusual. 
We must know. Is that clear? He arrived in Driftwood some days ago, dressed as a tinkerer. He bought and sold a few knickknacks. But we thought nothing of it until our brothers started vanishing. As soon as he knew we were onto him, he ran. We think he's hiding in here, but he's a canny one. Now, be on your way. Who knows where we could strike next? I'll take that, sorcerer. Dallas, get her! You're dead, Alexander. Alexander, you're dead. You have to stay dead until we say you're not dead anymore. Here, mister. Alexander doesn't have to stay dead, does he? See? Told ya. But don't worry. I'll revenge your death. Take that, sorcerer. You won't put a sauce collar on me, Dallas. I'm a big, bad, evil sorcerer, and I'll kill you dead. I hate this game. Might as well have dropped I don't care if we tear this place apart plank by plank. We will find him. You've been warned, Barnes. Now get out of my sight. The Magister turns, and his eyes fall on you. There's a sorcerer somewhere in this worm-ridden dump. Have you seen him? Grey cloak, grey beard, satchel of books. Lucian's teeth. Where is that runt hiding? If you see anything suspicious, anything at all, report it immediately. Do you understand? He's a sorcerer, dressed as a tinkerer. Our brothers started vanishing as soon as the tramp arrived in town. He fled into this stinking shed, but we'll find him again. We'll have... The Magister looks at you for a long, hard moment. He seems angry, puzzled and amused in equal measure. We have all the evidence we need. There will be no court of appeal for this sorcerer. Now, I've got a coward to catch. Excuse me. You tell the Magisters. You see a man, well-fed and wealthy, but stress has lined his face and narrowed his waist. He seems to be expecting you. He offers you a large and rusted key. You took your time. The Magisters are searching the place, and Lohan needs to get his stuff out of the basement if he doesn't want to lose it. He squints at you. He withdraws the key. You're not with Lohar. He eyes you suspiciously. No. No, I don't believe you are. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to forget everything I just said. You heard nothing. Agreed? Agreed. And, my friend, when it comes to Lohar, so should you. He gives you a look of dark warning and returns to his work. The dwarf peers at an expertly dissected fish, gently poking its innards with his knife. Fascinating. Most fascinating. Mm. Oh, my. I mean, no. Uh, what do you want? With a small grin, the dwarf glances between you and his handiwork and shrugs. Indeed I am. They can close our schools, but they can't take away what I've been taught. Besides, there's still so much to learn. Times are hard. There's not much gold to be made in scholarly pursuits. I can't ignore my first calling, though, especially when there's so much to learn. Yes, as it happens, I need to see the effects of eating these fish firsthand, if you understand me. Wonderful. Now, there's three samples that I wish to learn more about. Care to choose? The fish instantly churns your insides. You double over in pain. A sudden vivid sensation of floating in darkness assails you. There's something in there with you. Something. Hungry and corrupt. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. The dwarf suddenly drifts back into view, peering at you with fascination. How do you feel? A stream of black bile suddenly erupts from your mouth and across the dwarf's boots. He doesn't even look displeased. I see. Well, I'm sure it was nothing but a side effect of the fish. Speaking of which, I've learned a great deal from observing you. I owe you a great debt. Ah, yes. Of course, of course. But this mightn't be quite what you were expecting, but, um, well... The fish you ate is known as Yellow Ridgeback. Quite a cunning breed, often used in concoctions to increase alertness. But this one, touched by the void itself. Who is to say how such a creature might alter an alertness mixture? 
Seek out somewhere that peddles alertness herb mixes. Adding these um, unique rich packs might make quite the impact. So, now my work must continue, as soon as I've got in my quarter of fish, of course. Farewell, stranger. You tell the magisters. Then we can get them out, and you can get back to work. Hmm? What? You've been needing something from me, lad? Ain't much inclined to rub elbows with humans if you catch my drift. Decency, eh? Oh, I had me some decency back in the day. Days before the Reds. Days of the Divine. Long gone. Glad to hear you say it. The day will come we'll overthrow them, you mark my words. Until then, I'll practice the art of gutting on spoiled fish. Fugitive. Ah, yeah. I don't think that's something I should be discussing with strangers. Because I don't intend to end up with me lips stitched together, that's why. No, no, I shan't be baited. I ain't saying nothing on the topic no more. Gods be buggered fine. I'll tell. I'll tell you all I know. The dwarf leans in and begins whispering conspiratorially. This fella runs along right, sweating, panicking. Red's racing after him like hunting hounds. Hide in a barrel, you fool, I yelled. And what do you know? He did. Problem is, he's still in there. Been hours. Can't go nowhere, he can't, not with the Reds around. Behind the containers, the fish in one of the barrels shifts slightly. Please, you have to help me. The Magisters have gone mad. They're trying to kill me. Or worse, drag me off to Fort Joy. Please help me. I don't want to die. I don't want them to take me. I just need to get out of Driftwood. I can't risk being seen. But if you can get out of town, I can escape to Ox. Please, I'll do anything. Just don't let them see me. Don't let them find me. Damn it, hurry up! I can feel the fish oozing everywhere! I... I... Okay. Go if you have to, but please be quick. If the Magisters even think that I'm here, well, we'll all be sorry. I have enough nitre and brimstone to turn this factory into a crater. Please. I don't want to die. But if the Magisters find me, <laughs> I won't let them take me. I won't! Okay, but please be quick. They'll find me sooner or later. It's just a matter of time. You! You found him! Excellent. Now, stand aside. The Magister steps forward with a smile and draws his weapon. What? What? No, you said you'd help. You promised. You promised you'd get me out. You utter fool. Very well. If you want to share his cause, then you'll share his fate.
last. I was sure I'd die in that wretched place. You have my thanks. If not for you, I probably would have been found, gutted, and salted. I can't just saunter away. Who knows what might be lurking in a place like this? But once I'm sure the way's clear, I'm running to Ox like a cat with its tail on fire. I'm done with this stinking town. Please, I can't just let you walk away. Here, take this scroll as a gift. A damp, scale-covered roll of paper emerges from the barrel. In fact, that's what started all the trouble in the first place. The Magisters nearly lost their minds when they saw me with it. In the kitchens of the tavern, of all places. That cook had it. Offered it for a great price, too. I thought she was an idiot selling it so cheap. Then again, I'm the dolt who ended up in a barrel. But if she has Magister artifacts, she must be the one they're looking for. I swear, once I get to Ox, I'm going to have the bath of my life. The Meister's back! The Meister's back! She doesn't feel like playing, but... <laughs> The Meister sits slumped in a chair, looking around the room as she works her shoulder with one hand. It looks like it was dislocated by the gallows. Damnable red cloak baboons ransacking my wardrobes. As if I would keep ancient valuable secrets in a pile with my unmentionables. She takes a deep breath, and with a twist, a click, and a screech of pain, she shoves her shoulder back into its socket. <laughs> I swear by the seven, if, <laughs> if we did not have more important matters to attend to. Reaching across the table, she pulls a bowl of hot water towards her and fishes some bandages, a needle and thread out of a box. She slowly starts to tend to her wounds. At least the barbarians were unable to club their way into my vault, so everything you need should be safe. The Meister turns to you, her eyes wide with worry. Oh, pardon. I'm so sorry. How could I have forgotten? Thank you so much. Thank you for rescuing me after they had already strung me up. After they had tortured me for days, after they... She stops mid-shout, descending into a fit of coughing, wheezing and groaning. She glowers at you as she slowly regains her composure. <coughs> we are quite finished with politeness. There is so much to do. Apparently I had a claw in murdering their darling divine-in-waiting Alexander. The Meister wrenches the bandage, pulling the fabric tight against her wound. She winces before tying it off in a neat knot, but you can see the red stain already spreading across the fabric. Never mind that. Oof. Oof. That I was here the entire time. Apparently my cunning transcends time, space and common sense. Meister Siva freezes, her eyes locked on you, her claws mid-swipe, cutting a new stretch of bandage. <sighs> Why on earth should I have thought anything else? Not that I was <laughs> sorry to hear about his death. No, I doubt my grin helped matters during the interrogation. Enthusiasm? On a weekday? My word. We shall begin once we have <laughs> the tools we need from my vault. You may have been chosen, Godwoken, but the coming divine requires more than a supernatural pat on the head. Come, Godwoken. It is time to see just how awake you are. Fortunately, the Magister's Court not to talk to you are to take into fashion. Kindly remove that painting from the wall. It really is quite simple. In the corner there's a painting. Remove it and push the button behind it. Then we may move on to the vault. The combination to the vault is... 15R, 34L, 23R, 35R, 9R, 16L, 33L, 45R, 51L, 1L. Try to get it right.
I pray my instructions will not be too tough. Your talent for following simple instructions fills me. Push the button. A stone door lies flush with the floorboards. Etched whirls in the granite frame a delicate rotary dial. Gleaming under the dim light, the metallic dial almost seems to wink at you. Taking your time, you carefully enter the combination. The metallic sounds of the tumblers falling within the mechanism let you know you entered the code correctly. Excellent. Follow me. Your time is at hand, Godwoken. Ancient rooms, weird contraptions. Feel free to look about while this I place is Narkness' dream. Come speak to me when you wish to proceed, and try not to break anything in the meantime. The Meister is examining her wounds, prodding at this, wincing at that. Her face seems grim as she turns to you. Do you know what it means to have the power of the Divine, Godwoken? Just so. To accept divinity is to accept responsibility for the lives of every person and beast that walks Rivalon. If granted divinity, you would have the power of all seven gods at your disposal. You could heal any wound, pull islands from the sea, right any injustice. But make no mistake, the Divine has only one duty, to protect this world from the Void. The Divine cannot use his power for anything else. When you become the Divine, there is no more self. For just a moment, her eyes soften as she looks at you. It is no small thing to ask, but it is your duty. Without a new Divine, Rivalon will die. Very well, then. Let's see if we can't snatch Divinity from the jaws of the Void. The ritual itself is quite simple. Drop some black root in the bowl, mix in a little blood, set the concoction aflame, and then inhale the smoke. Ignore any feelings of dizziness, burning in your lungs, or a dire sense of existential dread. They're all perfectly normal, although you will need to sacrifice a little sauce along the way. Everything you need is here. Ingredients in the cupboard, sauce in the glowing fountain, ritual in the tome by the bookcase, even an incinerator to provide a flame. The Meister looks back at her wounds, curiously prodding them as fresh blood oozes out, staining her claws. Quite. Mind you, being torn asunder by a Voidwoken would be even more inconvenient. So if you wouldn't mind... The Meister points sharply to the ingredients cupboard. Once, although not by a god woken. My assistant did not believe that one had to be chosen by a god to become divine. She waves a bandaged hand absent-mindedly, wincing slightly. A headstrong and thoughtless girl, but the experience was... <coughs> ...was quite educational. From observing her, I gather that the ritual involves inhaling the smoke, a lot of screaming, and a rather sudden death. And putting our faith in you is a risk Rivalon must take. If you need more detailed information about the ritual, see the tome on a plinth by the bookcase. But be quick about it. We do not have much time. Opening the door, you see a selection of ingredients, thrown together in no particular order. After a quick rummage, you spot the black root nestled between the grated dragon's tongue and drudene oil. You gather up the black root, obsidian lance, and ancient bowl, and kick the door of the cupboard closed.
As you suck the smoke deep into your lungs, your vision starts to swim and cloud. There is an intense pounding in your head, and you can feel the world fading. As the world fades away, you lose all sense of being grounded. You reach out, but you could feel yourself falling slowly, sinking into the depths of your own soul. Bathed in the half-light of these starless barrens, you spot a figure you could only describe as a second self. It looks haggard and weak, its very voice but a feeble echo of your own. My chosen, come, come closer, so that you may see me as I truly am. You will see when you look me in the eyes. The apparition clasps your face in its shaking hands. You suddenly feel your eyes tingle. Everything becomes brighter, sharper. Blacks and whites become glorious bursts of color, then fade back into their accustomed spectrum. Blind eyes shine brightly. Speak the spell and see. Please. Speak the sp God is the strange mirror image of yourself. Before you stands the God Relic in all his spectral glory. You know me now, don't you? I saved you from drowning. I blessed you, made you powerful. And now I've come to seek some power in return. Your God-woken soul is my last refuge, my last bastion. May as well make the best of what you have to offer. Ralik nourishes himself from the source that abounds in your presence. You feel it deep down inside yourself. Ah, yes. Just what I needed. I tell you, dying just doesn't become a god. The void itself is hunting down the gods, leeching us in ways we never thought possible. Droplet by droplet, we are being drained. We're battling for our very survival. It's a battle we're losing, and should we truly lose, all will be cast into oblivion. To save us both, as a matter of fact. You must realize that our fates are now as one, just as our souls are now as one. We are I. Together we are a force to be reckoned with. But if we seek to survive the onslaught of the Void, we stand no chance unless we become vastly more powerful than we are now. That means there is but one place we can go. The Well of Ascension. It most certainly will be. The Well of Ascension is a lake, a pool of pure source in which the powers of the Seven lie united. We gave them up freely to create the First Divine. Each of us donated half of that which makes us gods. To bathe in the lake is to become our chosen. That is where the road to divinity leads, and you must be the first to reach it at all costs. There you touch upon the very heart of the matter. The void is stronger than ever. A new divine won't be enough. You need to go to the Well of Ascension, not to bathe in the source of the Seven, but to take it. All of it. Only he who claims everything will be everything. The Void's doom. This world's liberator. It's very simple, really. They will either bow to you or be undone. But of course, that is what they are saying to their own god woken as we speak. We both know they won't bow, just like we both know you will never bow to them. Only one can become a god strong enough to safeguard our world. One, at the expense of all others. So make no mistake, my champion. Chances are the road to divinity will be paved with dead gods, their blood on your murderous hands. But don't let that dismay you, for these sins will be washed clean by the knowledge you committed them to save all of existence, to save your kin and your loved ones and the world they live in. Of course, the ends do justify the means. Life or the eternal void. 
If you choose life, you choose the well of ascension. I will lead you there when you're ready, when you've become a true master of the source and speak the language of creation itself. Our journey will be fraught with peril. It is a pilgrimage of challenges that will require you to command source like only a god woken can and wield its most powerful spell. Hoarse laughter rolls and echoes into infinity. You are already formidable, my chosen. But you underestimate just how much more formidable you could be. We are I now. The spells you need to know I will teach you when you are ready. But first you must learn to channel the source in greater volumes. That is why you need to seek masters of the source. You must make them teach you, so that you may become a master in turn. So, return to Rivalon and seek out these sages where they dwell. Convince them to share with you their deep-seated bond with the Source. Once you have, you may return to me here. Something that will make you understand that for a god, there is precious little difference between the living and the dead. Source is. It is a constant, a subject of neither time nor transience. All of life is Source, and in Source it is. Immortally so. You have the vision of a god now. Eyes that can see spirits, the souls of the dead made manifest in Source. Speak the spell during your peregrinations, and you will see them. Where the dead lie, the dead linger. Best of luck, my champion. The Meister stares intently at you. Her eyes are tired and bruised, but determined. Still alive? Gods above, there might be something to you after all. She leans in, her bloody tongue flickering hungrily about your face. Tell me, what did you see? What do you know? She sighs impatiently as you hack up the last of the green smoke. You can't channel enough source. Gods be damned, why couldn't you have a nice simple problem? Finding an orc to dance the hornpipe, perhaps? I know exactly what must be done. You must find a master of source. And I could have helped you once, but no longer. The purging which the Magisters included as part of their service was quite... efficient. They stripped me of my source. Not enough to silence me, but enough that I would not turn their insides to lime. Enough to sever my link to the font from which all source flows. And certainly enough that I cannot train you. So we must seek alternatives. Alas, the only source masters not yet hauled off to Fort Joy or turn into meat puppets are those too dangerous or cunning for the Magisters to contain. Sorcerers that allowed their power to corrupt them. Many are wicked, cruel, vile, and generally not good teacher material, but we may have no others to turn to. Were the circumstances any different, I would indeed agree. However, it is the path we walk, no... <coughs> no matter what the cost. No matter... <sighs> What is asked of you? The Meister doubles over in a violent coughing fit, struggling for breath. After a few moments, she regains her composure, wiping a thin smear of blood from the corner of her mouth. No matter what is asked of you, you must learn from them. And you do not seem to be paying attention. Sorcerers, evil, controlling your source, saving Rivalon, please. <laughs> please tell me at least some of this rings a bell. Your focus, your only focus, must be on finding these masters. On finding the secrets to divinity. Nothing else matters. Unless I am. And we do not have time to nitpick morals. The Magisters have kept ledgers with all known sorcerers. Especially the powerful ones not yet captured. They would be an invaluable resource. But do be careful not to get caught. I was there, <laughs> guest for a time. And I promise you, the gallows was the most comfortable part of the experience. And if their barracks turns out to be as empty as their skulls, just try to keep an ear to the ground. There may still be powerful sorcerers hiding in these lands. As she speaks, one of her wounds reopens, a dark red stain spreading across her tunic. She hisses in frustration and starts to bind the gash. I wish there was more I could do, but in this condition, I would be more a hindrance than a boon. Godspeed, and remember, do whatever it takes.
The Magister startles, realizing there's a stranger in his midst. What do you want? You can't just come in here as you please. There's Magisters missing. I'm trying to conduct a bloody investigation. Get yourself together. We still have cells for you to be thrown into. Now answer me, why are you here? Well, mind your bloody step in future. I've an investigation to carry out, and I don't need any more distractions. I'm not some foot soldier, you clod. I can't put myself at risk. We've lost three of our number to this Higba fiend so far. I won't move from here until he's in a cell or in a box. Catching, killing, I don't care. There'll be gold for whoever puts an end to this rat. If you see anything, tell me or my men at once. Otherwise, keep the hell out of our way. Well, do you know anything? The Magister barely acknowledges this, his eyes flicking around the room as if waiting for an assassin to burst forth. Another one of my Magisters has been taken. Oh, let the Tinkerer run. There's no way he could have been behind this. The real culprit's still out there. Well, now? Well, now I'm going to have to start from scratch now. If you come across anything suspicious, anything at all, you come to me right away. Oh great, a citizen. Can't you see I'm on a break here? What? Oh no. Poor Demori. Go tell Magister Raymond or Magister Julian immediately. They'll raise the alert. Go. Now. Head nodding drowsily, the Magister brings her voluminous sleeve up to her face. She sniffs loudly and suddenly jerks to attention, eyes red-rimmed with zeal and something else. They won't take me unawares. I'm... I'm ready for anything. See? I have Inceptin. It... well, I'm ready. That's what... why whoever's snatching Magisters off the street and disappearing them? Six lost in a week. Six! Need to be ready. Ready! Ready! Ready to protect! Waving you away, she cranes her neck to scan all around her, jaw clenched and eyes flickering. Bellwether! I need those reports, cool, sir. Damn it. Right away. I'm watching you, stranger. That's magister business. Keep your nose out of it. Would you have to die of thirst? Right Fill away. my damn cup. The Magister turns to you with a scowl. He already seemed immensely displeased, and your interjection isn't improving his mood. What? Who asked you? You're not even supposed to be down here. The Magister glances around the cells before ripping the keys from his belt and casting them aside. This isn't the divine order I signed up for. Not anymore. I'm done. Blessings of the divine upon you, good sir. My husband and I were just sitting down for a picnic under the sun. We haven't much to offer, but would you care to join us? Wonderful. Come, sit, sit. Oh, it's lovely to meet new people on the road. There you go, all cosy. So tell me, are you heading to Arks like we are? Nicholas and I wouldn't miss Lucian's day for the world. 
Oh, but you must visit the cathedral. Please do. The more pilgrims pray for his return, the sooner Lucian will walk among us once more, just like the prophecy says. So come, let us break bread and strengthen ourselves for the journey. We have a sacred duty ahead of us in the holy city of Arx. You eat, drink, and have a good time of it with Glory and her husband, Nicholas. After the meal, you express your thanks and take your leave. Conclusion of a noble bloodline! You have interrupted my newest masterpiece! The bard clears his throat and gargles on his own saliva. He then returns to his poem, but his voice cracks mid-verse. Hmm. Well, never you mind. Every sonnet I compose is a masterpiece, and my muse has been begging me to write something new. Wait! You might be just the stimulus I needed. I shall craft a rhyme for you and your race. Magnificent! But if I am to write a first-rate work, you must face some difficult questions. Are you prepared to answer? He stares at you for a few torturing moments. Your eyes betray the guilt of the human race. You believe it your right to ravage Rivalon. What say you? He smiles a crooked smile and runs a hand through his greasy hair. Ah, arrogance. That most peculiar of human traits, given your lack of cultural accomplishment, save the towers you erect in worship of greed. What riches do you seek, human? Indeed, you seem almost fearless in your conviction. But I know better. Stripped of their swords and shields, humans are as fragile as flower petals. Admit your cowardice. The bard hems and haws, then bellows his next words to anyone who might hear. To all lovers of verse, I bring glorious news. I have completed another modern classic. Listen now, and bask in its resounding refrain. The war drums keep the rhythm of patrol. Humankind establishes control. I've ever been big on humankind, but that verse makes me feel a little more respect for them, you know? He fixes you with a stare, looks you up and down, weighs you up, the cut of your cloth, the weight of your bag. A moment passes. Then a smile creases his face, a smile carefully constructed to look friendly and authentic, a smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Greetings, stranger. Looking to ease the pain of a decaying world? You're in the right place. Beers are ordered at the bar, but can I interest you in a nourishing bowl of stew? He purses his lips. His fingers drum a pattern on his elbow as he assesses you. I'll tell you now, you'd better warm your hands before you go upstairs, or your new friend will be very upset. A lascivious smile spreads across his face. His tongue darts from his mouth to lick the spittle from his lips. Let me ask you this. Across the world, who is renowned above all others for their exquisite lovemaking abilities? Well, I'm sure that in your own case, that sentiment is almost true. But no, let me tell you the truth of the matter. My friend, the very best lovers are, whisper it, lizards. And for a barely significant sum of gold, I can introduce you to the greatest lizard lover the world has ever seen. The price, I'm afraid, is not negotiable. And believe me, this really is one exceptional kin lover. Are you sure you wouldn't care to change your mind? The money vanishes into his apron. Now, let me ask you this. What <coughs> flavor of stew do you prefer? Do you like the strong and meaty variety? Or do you prefer it delicate and fragrant, if you get my meaning? Upstairs on the second floor. Her name is Zara. Pleasure is her business. 
Enjoy the experience of a lifetime. He gives you a mischievous grin, then dips his head in salute and turns away. Arguing with Mac is like giving medicine to the dead. He's as stubborn as a corpse and smells the part to boot. No wonder Papa Thrash gives him the stink any time he tries to go downstairs. Another sorcerer on the loose. I knew they should have cut off the Meister's head and burned the rest. Gotta make sure it don't grow back. You've got With friends and lovers, find your true repose. Ah, oh, finally. Your colleague over there is absolutely useless. I'll have a bowl of the house stew, if you please. Oh, pity. I've been trying to get a little something to eat all day. But the giggle heads who run this establishment don't seem to be willing to provide a fellow with his fair portion. After all I've been through, too. He lowers his gaze, then looks up at you expectantly. His lip trembles dramatically. It's my mentor. My dear mentor. He was... killed by those void beasts. I told him we ought not to travel in the hills, but would he listen? No. Now here I sit, my closest companion gone, our precious cargo worth more than Lucian's right ring, lost to the beast-infested wilds. And the waiter won't even bring me any stew. Oh, then perhaps my luck has changed. Yes. Perhaps this awful business might soon be behind me. Tell me, how are you with, well, Void Woken? Ah, oh, terrific news. Then what I ask will be little more than a trifling. My mentor, Liam, and I were hauling in a goodly number of fine wares from the Southlands when we crossed paths with a great brute of a Void Woken. You made short work of Liam. May the gods rest his soul. I managed to escape, but my precious cargo was left behind. We'd invested our entire livelihood in those wares. I'd do anything to get them back. Very, very well, that's how. That cargo is worth more than a pretty penny, and I'll owe its retrieval to you and you alone. Now, give me your map. I'll show you just where to look. I doubt those beasts out there have any use of such a cargo. I can't tell you how thoroughly you've made my day. Good luck. She nods an uninterested greeting. Here for the fight. This is a tavern. People are drinking. Eventually there'll be a fight. You planning on starting one? Well, I look forward to beating the shite out of you then. Bye now. Till later. A prim woman in a starched apron wipes a glass with a clean rag. She pins you with blue, steel-sharp eyes as you approach the bar. Blessings upon our Lucian, seven times divine. The soft lines of her face fold into a warm smile. She sets the glass on the counter and pours you a generous portion of an amber liquor. I see your mother raised you very well indeed. You and my nails would get along. Nice to see an unfamiliar face. What brings you to Driftwood, darling? Fort Joy? Praises be, but that's where my boy Niles is stationed. He's the physician overseeing all the camp. Ye yeah, animal! Stay away from my bar, you hear? I can arrange to have that whacking serpent ripped right out of your head. An elf sways on her chair, her eyes focused on the counter in front of her, where she has six glasses in a row. With the nails of two fingers, she's pressing red welts into her forearm. She slides one of the drinks towards you, her head bobbling heavily on her neck as she nods at the sparkling ale. And that's... <laughs> Nothing like a glass of the good stuff to smudge everything into a pretty shape. 
she slides another glass of ale toward you. Its contents sparkle in the dim bar. Bottoms up. Ah, it's a sad story about a lover who left me out cold. Names, uh, mind your business. Can you just not... <sighs> Cheers to you, me, and... Her gaze swivels around the room. Damien's dull knife. This place is horrible. Never mind. Cheers to you, me, and me again. Another. Psh, give me one good reason. Maybe, maybe. I just, you know, it's hard. She shows you the two swollen, angry red welts on the underside of her arm. She slaps them without finesse, making herself wince, and stares at you intensely. I know how to make it better. I can fix it, all of it. I'll tell you. She jerks her arm away from you and gazes lovingly at the welts. She doesn't look up as she speaks. There's a... See, there's this woman. I'm not crazy. And if she kisses you, she can change you. She's downstairs. And, and, and now I'm different. You don't get it. It's in her lips. It's in the magic. It's in my body. I changed the right way. And then, and then, I mean, I think now I'll be fine. You understand how, you know, sometimes you just want to be fine. Well, what? I, I need to go. Thanks for drinking with me. So, till next time. If it ain't the beast, man. Can't believe you found driftwood. How do you smell the ale over all that rotten fish? Get it? <laughs> the unfamiliar dwarf scratches his head nervously, then chuckles again. He doesn't seem sure what to say next. Hey, 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 hey. Shh. Keep it low. I don't need magisters crawling up my backside after I just emptied it out. I'll be quiet as a mouse. You bet. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> now go on down. Effie's Emporium's your bag for sure. Hail, darling. Call me Dorothea. She draws close. You feel her breath on your neck, hot, moist. Mmm. Oh, yes. I have something that you want. But I only bargain with those I deem deserving. Those who have accomplished great things. So, tell me, are you worthy of my gift? Indeed. Mm, this is acceptable. You are nearer the one than most self-described heroes I've known. So, tell me, are you ready for me to grant you your greatest desire? I can't. Not yet. First, you must look into my ring and tell me what you see there. Gaze into the gem, my lovely. She flashes her ring at you, and you stare at the luminescent stone at its center. You are floating on a current of pure source, surrounded by a kaleidoscope of colors and fuzzy images. On the horizon looms a dark silhouette. As you approach, a beam of light washes the shadow away, revealing to you... Mmm, yes. I see you clearly now. Mmm. It is immortality you desire, as do we all. It's not something I can give, but I can give you the breath of life. In return, I ask for one courtesy. A kiss. A kiss. 
Dorothea sighs, a fusion of a kitten's purr and a cockroach's clacking. Ah, for me to help you, our souls must touch. And a kiss brings our souls closer, does it not? It shall fulfill both your desire and mine. Most delicious. Meet me around the corner and come alone. An audience is not required. Dorothea sees you and heaves a shuddering sigh. She bites into her lower lip with enough force that a drop of blood seeps out. Blood and something else, something green. Darling, I admit I wish we could share more carnal pleasures. Yet I think a kiss is the height of intimacy. Now come closer and receive your soul's desire. You draw closer and close your eyes, eager to feel her lips on yours. Yet her lips do not press against yours, and her hands do not caress your face. She is a woman no longer, but a were-spider. Unfortunate for you. You see, I came prepared for the occasion.
The thick, close smell of rotten fish crowds you like a fog. Almost done, you slip something smooth and metallic into a barrel among the half-disintegrated and reeking fish carcasses. Your man Mordus approaches, says he wants to join the team in the cave. You nod, though there's something strange about him today. He seems nervous, excited. You wipe your face with your forearm. The smell will stay on you for days. The things you do for queen and country, maybe more than they deserve. Good gods. In the shadows, a dwarven woman spits obscenities down upon a caged void woken. She exudes a powerful air of menace and an even more powerful odor of old sweat and dried blood. She spies you and glowers. More fodder for the arena. Let Murga the champion test how good your reflexes are. Curling her torn lip back over broken teeth, she grabs your hand and pulls you down to the ale-soaked table. Never losing eye contact, she begins arm wrestling you. Ha! Your science won't help you here. In the arena, you must be willing to suffer if you want to achieve greatness. She glimmers in and out of view, merging with the shadows. Crowing, she slams your hand down into the table, hard enough to draw blood. I bested that void woken below us, you know, dragged that scaly lump down there with my own two hands. So, since you can't hope to beat me, what is it you want down here? Ah! Based on your performance so far, that's cute. But I shouldn't judge your baby steps. The lion judge is not the pussycat, eh? Murga raises one surprisingly delicate eyebrow. Ah! Go talk to the raucous one. Tell him I sent you, and he'll set you up for a challenge. Prove yourself worthy fighting my acolytes blindfolded. Then, I'll knock your teeth out. The battered dwarf pulls her lips back into a garish, open-mouthed grin, flashing blood-stained teeth. and I'll knock the head in. Doing what are you here? <laughs> Laughing to me? I have an injurious brainwave again to try. Not to be worth it. I, tending and have been grow by their largest fans. Good little gnomes. Caretaking! My gnomons get a hot head if you danger make their treasures. Go easy. Goodly do it. I'm 